before starting this webinar please recite the holy quran اعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا ايها الناس كلوا مما في الارض حلالا طيبا ولا تتبعوا خطوات الشيطان إِنَّهُ لَكُمْ عَدُوٌّ مُبِينٌ إِنَّمَا يَأْمُرُكُمْ بِالسُّوءِ وَالْفَحْشَاءِ وَأَن تَقُولُوا وَأَن تَقُولُوا عَلَى اللَّهِ مَا لَا تَعْلَمُونَ ترجمة لوگو جو چیزیں زمین میں حلال طیب ہیں وہ کھاؤ اور شیطان کے قدموں پر نہ چلو وہ تمہارا کھلا دشمن ہے وہ تو تم کو برائی اور بے حیائی ہی کے کام کرنے کو کہتا ہے اور یہ بھی کہ خود کے خدا کی نسبت ایسی باتیں کہو جن کا تمہیں کچھ بھی علم نہیں صدق اللہ رضی جزاک اللہ یہ جیسے کہ میں نے کہا ٹوینٹی تھرڈ پی ایم اے اکیڈمک ویبینار ہے اور اس میں ہمارے آج کے سپیکر ہیں پروفیسر ریٹائرڈ برگیریئر عامر اجاز صاحب برگیریئر عامر اجاز صاحب ایک ہمارے استادوں کے استاد ہیں ہی ہیز ریٹن سو مینی آرٹیکل سو مینی بکس اسپیشلی ہی ہیز اے نان ویل نیم ان کیمیکل پیتھالوجی اینڈ ٹوڈے وی آر ڈس وی ول ڈسکس diagnostic accuracy study how to go about it we know the lab is very important or uh, especially during the phase of the corona uh, the labs becomes more important so but there are so many problems how to uh, make the quality control internal quality control external quality control to increase the reliability not only the patients and also to the uh, uh, clinicians. That is why we are continuously uh, uh, making these uh, webinars in collaboration of clinician and uh, pathologist. Dr. Amir Ejaz, now it is over to you. Uh, thank you very much, sir. Um, uh, and thank, I am thankful to PMA. Uh, President Dr. Salma Kundi, Dr. Kazi, and Professor Mulazim, Professor Rashid for giving me this opportunity. And uh, uh, I hope you will uh, learn something after the, long, the series, the excellent series of uh, lectures conducted by Vigidan Nuzir Mishahid. And uh, she really dealt the topic very nicely. And uh, I'm just a small, I will do just a small contribution and whatever she has uh, uh, built. Uh, the diagnostic accuracy study, she mentioned uh, the concept of the stu these studies and uh, what, is the imp what are the importance of these studies in uh, clinical practices. So to my uh, topic today is actually how to go about it. This is not limited for chemical pathologists. This is not limited even to pathology. Uh, diagnosis, uh, is done the teamwork uh, which comprises uh, radiologist and clinician also. So uh, you will find diagnostic accuracy studies carried being carried out by the pathologist, by radiologists and some of the clinicians also. So the specific learning outcome is what are the skills to carry out these diagnostic studies and uh, you must have uh, heard the, uh, these terms, specificity, sensitivity, positive predictive value, negative predictive value, likelihood ratios, ROC curve. Uh, these terms, how we determine these terms, what I'm sure, I'm sure what, whenever you read some articles on any clinical topic, uh, whenever they mention some, what it has, some radiological imaging, they do mention these parameters. So who determine these uh, parameters and how these parameters are determined? Um, what are the studies 
will carried out for these. Uh, these are called uh, diagnostic accuracy studies. So if you don't mind, I will do some interaction also. And uh, by no means I want to test anybody. This is just to keep you in, involved and the interaction actually in, increases the involvement of participants. So if you have got a copy pencil, you can uh, write on the answers. So, and then you can share it in the chat box if, if you want. If nobody wants, I will give the answer myself, but that will, you will really enjoy if you do the interactive uh, things. So my first task is, uh, this a training in histopathology has planned a study to compare the results of a special staining for an oral cavity cancer with a presently used fish assay, considered to be gold standard. Name the study type she is using. Which study, which type of study she is doing? She is, uh, uh, she is comparing the special staining for oral cavity cancer with, with a very sophisticated technique, which is called fish. Um, keeping that in as a gold standard. This, this study is a diagnostic accuracy study. So diagnostic accuracy studies, uh, as I told you, uh, mostly the, these are uh, done by the people who are involved in diagnosis, either lab diagnosis or radiology or some other fields which are related to the diagnosis. In studies of diagnostic accuracy results from an index test, Index test is the new test or the test which is under evaluation are compared with the results obtained from a gold standard. Now the latest term for gold standard is a reference standard uh, on, the, on the same subjects. Such accuracy studies are a vital step in the evaluation of a new test. Now when there are studies, when this test is, has been just introduced uh, or before uh, actually uh, Practice, starting practice this test uh, in, in clinics, uh, we carry out. We do not do it uh, uh, ongoing. This is done uh, once the test has started. And for example, if the test is done for disease A, and now you want to do uh, the same, use the same test for disease B, you have to carry out the, uh, the studies once again. So it has to be a disease specific may be used for new employment of an existing diagnostic technology. There are four essential parts of uh, diagnostic accuracy studies. These are called PERT. PERT is the acronym used for it. Number one, of course, the patients. Selecting a group, a group of patients, uh, for example, suspected cases. Then index test, the test in question, for example, a lab test imaging technique. A reference standard, what is the best reference gold standard to diagnose the target condition? For example, histopathology. In, in pathology, in laboratories, uh, usually the histopathology is the gold standard because the, this is the final test uh, and uh, their diagnosis is taken uh, as final. Uh, target condition, which condition is to be ruled out, uh, ruled in or ruled out. So uh, these are the four pillars of diagnostic studies patients, index test, reference standard, or gold standard, uh, and target condition. So per the, without uh, four of these, you cannot carry out uh, diagnostic disease studies. The reference standard or the gold standard can be a single test or a combination of methods and techniques, including clinical follow-up of tested subjects. So uh, usually it is a single test. Usually I told you, usually it is a, uh, histopathology or biopsy test, but it can be a combination of uh, laboratory tests or a combination of uh, laboratory tests and clinical um, follow-ups of the tested subjects. So uh, anything can be uh, used, but very importantly, the reference standard or gold standard has to be selected very carefully. Once selected, you cannot change it. And uh, there, is a, there is another um, criteria that this uh, should be uh, itself about 95% specific and sensitive. There are less than 95% uh, uh, specific and sensitive. You cannot use, uh, generally it is not recommended that uh, this test should not be used, but sometimes you have to compromise uh, some of these criteria. Uh, 
what about this gold standard? Now, uh, to, just to give you a, a, some concept about the gold standard, I am quoting this example. This is an actual example of a research study. The diagnostic accuracy of anti-cyclic uh, citrullinated peptide antibodies, CCTP, in rheumatoid arthritis. Uh, rheumatoid factor as a gold standard. Now, the researcher has is uh, assessing CC, anti-CCP and uh, they have uh, uh, taken rheumatoid factor as gold standard. Can you see any problem in this? If you, uh, if you want to give your comments, your interaction about this study, for example, this study comes to you for, um, you know, this paper comes to you for review. What will be your comments? What is the main, there are, there, there are some basic issues in it. Uh, so can you tell me what, what are those issues? Uh, you can write your answer on the chat if you want. I will wait for 30 seconds for your uh, answers. So I repeat, uh, the researchers uh, want to evaluate anti-CCP, which is a very sophisticated, very uh, supposed to be a very good test for rheumatoid arthritis, keeping rheumatoid factor as gold standard because uh, RA factor is a very commonly done uh, carried out test. So what, what is the main problem in this? Uh, I can see one answer in the chat box. RA factor is positive in other conditions also. This is not specific. Good. Dr. Uh, Faiza Mushtaq, this is a good answer. Uh, the sensitivity or the specificity of uh, RA factor itself is questionable. But this is a um, good answer. Anything else? Anything else you want to say? Okay, gold standard has to be a very high sensitivity, 95% specific and sensitive. And whereas rheumatoid uh, factor, as Dr. Faiza Mushtaq has just told us, is not enough uh, sensitivity and specificity. There is another very important question. And this question is, if rheumatoid, for example, we say rheumatoid, <coughs> excuse me, rheumatoid uh, RA factor uh, is a good test. It, it has got a perfect specificity and sensitivity and it is available. It is, uh, its course is low. So what is the fun of doing another test when you already have a are if, uh, are, are a good test with a high specialty sensitivity and why then you want to induce another test? If such an accurate test is already available, then what is the requirement of another test? So uh, then comes the question uh, that why we introduce new tests when the gold standard exists? The answer is that the gold standard uh, is maybe very expensive, maybe it requires high invasive procedure, it may be, it requires a very high expertise for interpretation. This is this problem with the, the histopathology test biopsies. Although it's, it's just, I, as I told you, histopathology tests uh, or HND and all those special things, they are the final test, they are the gold standard. But can you uh, use these tests for monitoring can you uh, repeat these tests? Can you use it frequently? Can you do the invasive procedure in every patient? So if gold standard does exist, but it there are problems with it. For example, it is very expensive. It, is, it requires high standard expertise for interpretation or it is invasive. Then you work on some other tests and compare it with the gold standard. So usually gold standard is expensive, requires more expertise or invasive. In this particular example, if uh, RA factor is very good, you, are, you can use it as gold standard. So, but RA factor can be done um, on the blood, a simple test, no, no invasive procedure is required. Then why you have another test like anticyclic uh, CCTP? So, uh, gold standard is, uh, is, has to be very appropriate and you cannot use uh, tests like RA factor as gold standard. Ideally, if you want to evaluate, if you want to carry out anti-CCP uh, uh, evaluation, uh, the diagnostic accuracy of anti-CCP, you have to use a test which is very superior to it. Um, and if that, it doesn't exist, then you can use the clinical features 
you can uh, you can borrow those the gold standard from uh, from a sister field like radiology you can uh, use some imaging technique for this but you cannot use rf to test like rf -X. so how to go about it first of all very important you have to uh, select series of patients now what type of patient this is very very important please be careful please as as they say uh, lend me your ears आप जरा पूरी तवज्जो से मेरी बात सुने कि यहाँ पे जो हम पेशेंट सेलेक्ट करेंगे द पेशेंट वी आर गोइंग टू सेलेक्ट फॉर दीज स्टडीज हैज टू बी सिमिलर पेशेंट्स फॉर एग्जांपल यू वांट टू डू ए टेस्ट फॉर पैंक्रोटाइटिस यू हैव ऑल योर पेशेंट शुड बी ऑफ एब्डोमिनल पेन आई एम जस्ट गिविंग एन एग्जाम्पल सो द टेस्ट विल डिसाइड whether the pancreatitis exists or not you cannot use a normal controls like we use in other research studies we sometimes we select medical students as controls we use uh, uh, hospital employees as controls no you cannot use those uh, people as control the controls and the patients have to be the uh, from the same population then the the index test which the test you want to evaluate Uh, for diagnostic accuracy and the reference standard gold standard i already told you some of the characteristics of gold standard compare the result of the index test with the reference standard the, the final thing is how to compare it now i give you an example uh, if if uh, uh, some pathologists are uh, attending this talk and some radiologists the, i give you a very important tip that Uh, do carry out diagnostic accuracy studies because these studies are published very quickly for their publishing time is quite reduced i i collected data in a, in another talk and presented it that the uh, uh, studies which involved uh, diagnostic accuracy they were uh, reviewed very quickly accepted because uh, they are of high utility clinically The, these studies are quite helpful for the clinicians they can now know about the uh, laboratory tests about the radiology tests and they can use it with more confidence so i am giving you an example of the diagnostic accuracy studies which have been lately published uh, carried out by uh, by me and other authors for example this diagnostic accuracy of serum iron and tibc in iron deficiency state This was published in C J C P S. You know, it's a uh, impact factor journal, and uh, in two thousand sixteen, it published. Then accuracy of non-fasting uh, lipid profile for the assessment of lipoprotein coronary factors. This was again published in J C P S P, and uh, uh, not uh, long time ago, in two thousand sixteen, it was published. Then diagnostic accuracy of. Uh, 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 again, it is in a diagnostic accuracy study published in two thousand sixteen in Pakistan Journal of Pathology. Then uh, another diagnostic accuracy study uh, evaluation of random glucose uh, published in JCPSP uh, uh, long not long ago, but in two thousand seventeen. A novel clinical biochemical marker uh, which was published in JCPSP in two thousand eighteen. so uh, these are the examples that uh, diagnostic accuracy studies are very good public publications you can carry out the these uh, these are the fields open for pathologists radiologists and they can do these studies and uh, what what uh, uh, when trainees come to me with suggestions uh, they usually uh, they design association studies those association studies or correlation studies they are not of high uh, quality and uh, the journals like jcpsp or jpm they do not accept those studies so <laughs> whereas diagnostic accuracy studies are given uh, priority for publication so there are other studies also uh, for uh, for uh, for diagnostic people you know, for example outcome studies reference values Uh, we can have a, a separate talk on reference values and uh, uh, then two statistical procedures uh, 
these these studies are uh, very good for clinical utility and they are published uh, uh, quite often in studies of diagnostic accuracy we have already discussed this what is the test in diagnostic study laboratory test radiology test imaging history clinical examination uh, function test for example lung function test etc so uh, it is not only laboratory it is radiology history clinical examination uh, function test for example lung function test now i give you another task you have to help this training uh, and as uh, previously you can write your answer in the chat box atni has been assigned to work on ca19.9 this is a marker for uh, ca pancreas uh, and which is being done in her lab for the last 2 years she has collected data of 342 patients uh, who underwent this test 88 were with raised level uh, while rest were abnormal rest as were normal 88 were raised and rest were normal she showed this data to her supervisor that he did not but he did not like it and said that she should calculate specificity and sensitivity so the problem is can she determine specificity and sensitivity in this project if yes how so this is the uh, problem that uh, ca19.9 uh, uh, is to be evaluated for diagnostic accuracy and the uh, trainee has already uh, collected data of 342 patient 88 of them were uh, positive raised levels so how can she determine uh, specificity and sensitivity in this particular study if, if uh, can she determine it or not If if yes, how? Thirty second for your answer, but the first answer has already come. Let's see, Doctor Samairam, false negative should be added. Okay, how can we add false negative? No, cannot be done without gold standard. Doctor Aisha Sadika from PIMS, uh, yes, uh, you are very right. This study cannot be done because there is no gold standard. So. You, how can you carry out a study just on the data of the, uh, of just on the basis of the data of the uh, one index test? So uh, this this will simply a, a association study or a frequency study that we carried out three forty two patients and eighty eight were positive, and it will be having a very low uh, grade evidence. So. Uh, Uh, if if she add if she can add some uh, gold standard like a uh, imaging technique or like clinical um, assessment or post op assessment etc then only it can be a uh, diagnostic accuracy study so reference standard uh, can be single test or combination of methods techniques including clinical follow up of tested subjects please give examples of the test which can be employed as a reference standard i have already given you examples and uh, uh, they can be the mostly they are histopathology but can be uh, uh, imaging can be uh, uh, clinical follow up the term uh, accuracy refers to the amount of agreement between the now what we are looking for we are looking for the agreement between the index test and the reference standard or gold standard how much there is agreement uh, no no uh, once you have selected the gold standard you have uh, collected the data and uh, the reference standard you have selected so uh, how to go about it now this is this is the very important chart and this is the very important grid uh, that uh, you have already carried out both the test index test and gold standard test and uh, how to uh, make the grid uh, if the test is positive by the reference standard and positive by the index test then it will be true positive i repeat if the test is positive with the gold standard and index test it is true positive if the test is negative for the reference standard but uh, positive for the index test it will be false positive so very important lesson here is uh, we we cannot doubt reference standard once we have started the study what have what what is the result of reference standard is final 
uh, if reference trend is say negative, uh, it is negative. And if index has said positive, the index has is telling a lie. So uh, reference standard uh, uh, cannot be challenged at any stage of the study. Uh, you can, uh, you should care, select it very carefully, but during the study, whatever reference gold standard says, it is final. Uh, uh, just in a lighter tone, uh, as in house, you know, uh, who who is the reference standard, who is the gold standard, and you know our staying is final, and you should not challenge uh, whatever she says. I mean, the uh, the wife says, and that is the final, that is the gold standard. I hope all husbands will not um, will not forget it. Then uh, index test is uh, negative, and uh, the reference standard is negative. Then it is. Uh, false negative. And if reference standard is negative, index test is negative, then it is true negative. So uh, once you have collected the data, you can make this simple uh, chart. It's very simple, very easy to make. Uh, just sort it out the uh, true positive, true negative, false positive, false positive. Th this is the all uh, stat you have to do. Then just a few formula and you can build your uh, statistics. Uh, but before doing this, please see what is wrong here. A trainee in chemical pathology has developed a technique for of measuring calcium and atomic absorption with a calorimetric calcium assay taken as gold standard. If some chemical pathology is uh, uh, sitting here, uh, can you please write your answer in the chat box? What is wrong with this particular study? That uh, calcium... Uh, by atomic absorption is has to be uh, assessed keeping calorimetric calcium as the gold standard can anybody write what is the problem here dr fiza calorimetry is not gold standard yes dr aisha yes atomic absorption should be gold standard it it has to be other way wrong if if and if you want to do it, there is another uh, yes. Uh, you are very right. Both of these uh, doctors, they are very right. Uh, the it has to be other way around. Uh, if calorimetric uh, is to be assessed, atomic absorption should be gold standard because we all know that uh, atomic absorption is a very high sensitive specific test for calcium, and it can be used at gold standard, not the calorimetric test. A field can, method cannot be a gold standard of a reference method. Two major flaws. Now, in, in this particular study, which I'm going to tell you, there are two flaws and you have to find out those flaws. A trainee in chemical pathology is evaluating a new tumor marker for the diagnosis of ovarian cancer. She has selected stage three cases of ovarian cancer as subjects and female medical students as controls name two major flaws in our studies. I've already mentioned one of the flaws, uh, but you can also find out another flaw. There are two flaws in this study design. What she's doing is, she's doing uh, working a tumor marker for ovarian cancer. So selection flaw, yes, Dr. Taiba, you are very right. Uh, there is a bias, selection bias. She has only selected stage three cases. It has to be a mix, mixture of stage one, two, three, four, and those subjects which have not been yet diagnosed. So there is a spectrum bias and there is a selection bias. What is spectrum bias? That uh, medical students have been used as controls. You cannot use medical students as controls. So all these bias has to be removed before carrying out these studies. Series of patient control and patient from uh, should be from same population. Yes, Dr. Ina, very right. Uh, it has to be same. It is not like case control study. It is, these diagnostic studies, these are not case control exactly. Uh, you have to take the same clinical condition, the patient of the same clinical condition. Only then you can evaluate, uh, you can get the diagnostic accuracy of uh, the particular test. Well, 
what is the ideal reference? See, this is the question now. What is the ideal reference standard for a study on PSA? I'll wait for a few seconds. Uh, you, somebody wants to do a PSA. Uh, what should be the ideal reference standard or gold standard? The control population should be okay. Any other? Any other? These are the choices, biopsy, CT scan, digital rectal examination, total prostate, me, transrectal. Biopsy, histopathology, radiological examination. Radiological uh, CT scan, you mean, you have to choose one of them. A, B, C, you can write A, B, C, D, E, any one of them. Biopsy, IHC, immunohistochemical, that is after biopsy, yes, biopsy. Actually, if uh, uh, the problem is that the gold standard, uh, if you can do the, of course, it is total prostatectomy because uh, the problem with biopsy is that uh, you, you may not be uh, hitting the same area where there is a cancer is lying. So ideally is total prostatectomy, but you cannot do it total press. Of course you cannot do, then you resort to uh, the biopsy. So in clinical practice, you can, you can use biopsy, but actually the gold standard is total prostatectomy. Just for your enjoyment. Now, we actually go for the attribute of the test, which is the sensitivity, specificity, receiver, operator, characteristic curve. The real name is receiver, operator, characteristic curve. Likelihood ratio is a positive, likelihood ratio of negative test, pre-test probability, post-test probability, uh, uh, and uh, we will, one by one, we will uh, discuss how to uh, do, uh, do these attributes. Sensitivity, what is sensitivity? Is It is the proportion of those people who really have the disease and who are correctly identified as such. Uh, now in simple language, first I will say in uh, English and then in Urdu, uh, that sensitivity is the ability of the test to pick up the disease out of the disease population. Ability of the test to pick up the disease out of the disease population. If you still couldn't get it, so I don't language change the language. test introduce and disease. disease so, 80 को वो कह देता है कि है 20 को वो कहता है कि नहीं है तो जो 80 उसने ढूंढे हैं वो ट्रू पॉजिटिव है और जो 20 उसने कहा कि नेगेटिव है वो एक्चुअली फॉल्स नेगेटिव है तो ये है सेंसिटिविटी यानी सेंसिटिविटी को हम डिजीज पॉपुलेशन के रेफरेंस से करते हैं इसका आप बड़ा सिंपल फार्मूला है टोटल पॉजिटिव ओवर टोटल पॉजिटिव प्लस फॉल्स नेगेटिव जो 100 थे वो सारे डिजीज थे उनमें से 80 को उसने ट्रू पॉजिटिव का a B is the number of false negative. Word. So this is the two by two table that uh, uh, this is the test and this is the disease. And how we found out the disease? We found out the disease based on uh, reference statement. The gold standard has to, because gold standard cannot tell a lie. So gold standard has to be true. So this is the sensitivity. Similarly, uh, specificity is the proportion of those people who really do not have the disease who are correctly identified as such. Now we will take it. We take 100 healthy people. We don't say healthy. Those people who don't have a specific disease that we have diagnosed. For example, we take 100 people and we are sure we have done the gold standard and we know that they do not have the disease. Uh, so now we carry out the, that test on 100 disease-free people. 
and uh, 80 uh, out of these 80 people our test says they are they do not have disease but in 20 the uh, test says the disease is present so uh, this uh, is two negative 80 is two negative and 20 is false positive so in uh, specificity two negative is divided by two negative plus false positive because two negative plus false positive they are the disease free people now Question number two is, in which of the following situations specificity and sensitivity cannot be calculated by usual formula? Data of alpha fetoprotein with a cutoff value of 500 and liver biopsy. Data of FNA, breast and excisional biopsy. Data of PSA without any established cutoff value and prostatic biopsy. Now, which uh, you have to select me A, B, C, in which situation you cannot uh, calculate uh, specificity and sensitivity. The answer has come. C. Dr. Iba, C. Dr. Hina, C. Yes. Any other? Yes, you are very right. We cannot uh, calculate diagnostic accuracy, specificity, sensitivity on uh, in, in the situation of C. Uh, data of PSA without any established. So uh, this is the problem that uh, for diagnostic accuracy, the, the data has to be dichotomous. Yes, no. Uh, and if it is uh, not dichotomous, you have to uh, convert it into the dichotomous data. So the, an important requirement is specific sensitivity. Data has to be dichotomous. That is yes or no. You cannot, in continuous data, you cannot apply specific sensitivity or data converted to dichotomous. For example, dividing patients on the basis of cutoff limits of TSH into hypo or hyper and euthyroid. So you, uh, uh, this is a very, very important uh, concept to be understand that uh, uh, you cannot apply, uh, the, you, cannot, you cannot calculate specific sensitivity, et cetera, on a continuous data. Uh, yes, for FNA, because either tumor pregnancy is present or not present, uh, for TB test, TB is present or not present. But what about uh, the tests which do not have a uh, very fixed cutoff value? So you have to uh, then find out the cutoff value and divide it into yes or no type. Only then you can apply it. How to apply these statistical when uh, definite cutoff values are not available? This is the answer. In such situation, when you do not have a cutoff value, you use receiver operating characteristic curve, uh, ROC curve, receiver operating characteristic curve. Uh, this is a very good method of determining the cutoff values. And uh, we borrowed, the medical field has borrowed this technique from, uh, from Air Force. This is very interesting. In Second World War, uh, the radars were newly invented and they used this technique of receiver operating characteristic curve uh, for finding out that the particular image seen on the radar, uh, how much likely that it is an enemy aircraft or not. So uh, this technique is now uh, used in medical science also. Now, question number three is, if pathologists want to use TSH only regime, screening for, for screening of thyroid disorders. Which of the following attribute is most important? Uh, yes, which of, yes. Uh, which of the following attribute is most important requirement of the TSH? Now, uh, you know, TSH uh, uh, is now very, uh, has become quite sensitive and uh, we want to use it for screening of uh, uh, thyroid disorders, PSH only, not any other test, not T3, T4. So which of the very important requirement for TSH uh, you will you will like to have? High sensitivity, yes. C, high sensitivity. High sensitivity. This is very important. So whenever you want to do a screening test, 
you you should use a test with high sensitivity uh, this i i give you a situation for example you are carrying out a sensitivity for tb tuberculosis in a population you know screening means that you are doing the test in healthy population they are they and you go to the patient you patient do not come to the hospital uh, the the particular academic definition of screening test is the test which is done uh, by going to the patient because patient is otherwise normal he does not uh, the uh, does not have any symptoms or any uh, any problem so and if the test is negative you you do not bother anything more and you simply uh, say that that particular disease is not present so if you want to uh, use the test for this particular situation the test has to be very good sensitive because do not want uh, false negatives you not you cannot afford false negatives uh, if you are using the test for uh, for screening so sensitive test to rule out snout this is the snout is the uh, abbreviation on mnemonic which you can use uh, it sensitive test is able to pick up affected person used to rule out diagnosis used when there is a penalty in missing a case a diagnosis of a dangerous but treatable condition for example tuberculosis blood screening for hiv used at an early stage of diagnostic workup a sensitive test is most useful when negative so uh, please remember when you want to do screening for example hiv hcv on blood uh, donors you have to use a very sensitive test with a high sensitivity specific test for rule out uh, and it is spin spin is uh, a specific test for rule in for rule in the previous was snout to rule out and spin is to rule in rule in means uh, now you want to carry out a definite treatment for the disease so uh, the your screening tests have found out that the patient has got uh, uh, tuberculosis for example now you want to be sure that the patient has got the tuberculosis or hiv or cancer and now you want to do the test uh, which is very high specificity which cannot give false result and because you you are now embarking on a definite treatment for the disease so spin is for the specific test to rule in and snout for the sensitive test to rule out please if you can remember it question number 4 in the scenario of question 3 two firms have offered tsh as a kits with following specifications uh we we are just talking on clinical sensitivity not analytical sensitivity uh, and uh, uh, tsh uh, i you know uh, there are now uh, recommendation that tsh only should be used and you want to use a very high sensitivity test so firm a has quoted a kit which has got uh, 94% sensitivity and 45% specificity firm b has uh, offered a kit with 90% sensitivity and 81% specificity which firm uh, he should select for procurement of tsh kits for a cost effective and safe screening of it let's see what are your examples a b b b Doctor Saida B, Doctor Hina A. Okay, so there is a mixed answer, and mixed answer always uh, excite me. Doctor Nabila A. Okay, you can some people other people can also write your answer. Doctor Saida A. Okay, let's see. Now the problem is, uh, yes, we say that high sensitivity is required for screening test. but we should also consider some uh, specificity because uh, if we if let's assume that we select this form a and this we get high sensitivity but there are false positive results on because the specificity is very low so what will the the, the cost effectiveness will be reduced so there will be many falsely included patients and on this uh, on the further testing Uh, they will be found actually negative. So the cost of the uh, 
uh, screening will or testing will be increased so we can do we should do some trade off 90% sensitivity is good enough but specificity should also be uh, reasonable so best answer is firm b so don't ignore specificity because otherwise your test will become your lab or your system or your uh, uh, syst, uh, your health system will become uh, less cost effective so uh, you, you should do go for good sensitivity but also uh, can do consider uh, specificity so cost consideration is very important in screening tests the positive test samples are tested by another test for or imaging if you choose a test with very high sensitivity but low specificity the number of false positive tests will be high and cost will increase so from feasibility point of view a test with high sensitivity but reasonable sensitivity specificity is chosen now this is a very important question and uh, question 5 now we go to the question 5 uh, this uh, involves a lot of your brain work a lot of critical thinking is involved so if you have already gone somewhere else please come back to the uh, talk and give your uh, answer after some thinking a pathologist is working on determination of specificity and sensitivity of PSA at various cutoffs. Which of the following is the lowest cutoff? Uh, I, I give you a simple uh, words. A pathologist ne teen cutoffs ne hai. Uh, C1, C2, C3, whatever they are. C1 jo hai na wo both come where, for example, it's a two nanogram hai, or uski sensitivity 98%. C2 है और C3 भी है तो कौन सी आपके ख्याल में कट ऑफ सबसे कम है इन तीनों में कौन सी कट ऑफ सबसे कम है जिसकी सेंसिटिविटी बहुत अच्छी है और स्पेसिफिटी बहुत कम है ऐसी कौन सी कट ऑफ है जिसकी सेंसिटिविटी बहुत ज्यादा है और स्पेसिफिटी ए ओके डॉक्टर आयशा यू हैव रिटन ए एनी अदर आंसर If you have understood the concept of uh, this specification, you can answer this question. Dr. Salma A, Dr. Noman B, Dr. Sajad 3. Okay, let's see if uh, I, I can wait for 10 more seconds if you some somebody else want to participate in this quiz. There is another answer. Dr. Hina A, Dr. Nabila B, the question is, which sensitivity is the lowest in this situation? It is A, because uh, the in the when you uh, decrease your cutoff very low, I give you an example of this uh, PSA that uh, we, for example, we say the we, uh, the sensitivity uh, the cutoff will be two point five nanogram. Anybody two point five uh, and above will be labeled as uh, CA prostate. So uh, we will not miss any, any CA prostate and our sensitivity will be very high. Whereas specificity will be low because uh, 2.5 is quite low and uh, many patients for, will be false positive. Uh, similarly, if you the, if we increase it to six, there, the sensitivity will decrease, but specificity will be increased. And we if we increase it to 10, sensitivity will be very low but if sensitivity will be high why if we say that um, anybody above uh, 10 nanogram is having this uh, prostate cancer then uh, surely uh, we will miss many patients who, whose uh, uh, psa will not be very uh, quite high but since our cutoff is quite high we will miss those but when we say it is ca prostate uh, there is likelihood that the biopsy will also be positive. So, if we decrease the uh, if we decrease the cutoff, the uh, cutoff uh, the sensitivity increases. Now, a lab task five: a lab test for Mycobacterium tuberculosis is carried out at AFIP round. You know, AFIP Armed Forces Institute of Pathology. This is probably the biggest labs, one of the biggest labs in Pakistan. Very big. 
uh, uh, lab and you if you're if you're a pathologist you must visit this lab at least see you can see all the departments from working in that in, under one roof and there is a lab in uk with almost equal accuracy uh, they are doing uh, their on their own population mycobacterium tuberculosis test so the question is uh, the positive predictive value at afip is 61 percent positive predictive value at uk lab is 36 percent now the question is why the difference why is the difference we suppose that here population is vaccinated okay uk has less cases of tuberculosis prevalence prevalence difference in prevalence strain not uh, dr saiza we 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 suppose that the strain is the same strain is same difference in prevalence okay let's see any other answer this is again a very important concept we have more patients dr saima iram good we have more patients yes uh, the positive predict the predictive values depend on prevalence of the disease now we we are going on the second part which, which are the predictive values but right from the beginning you must uh, understand that predictive values depend on the prevalence this is very very important a pathologist working on determination of predictive values of various tests which of the following tests has the highest predict positive predictive value assuming these tests are being done for the same disease in the same community ab ab humne ek community mein ye test ho rahe hain same test hai aur same community mein uh theek hai theek hai same community mein same disease ke liye ho raha hai test a test different hai lekin disease aur community same hai test a ki jo sensitivity hai 98% hai aur specificity 96% hai aur test b ki sensitivity 95% 54% and is tarah se ki hai so mera khala answer aane shuru ho gaye we have more no abhi nahi aaya answer koi iska answer dein a dr faiza dr salma a okay okay let's see there is another two two more answers Dr. Taiba A, Dr. Saima Iram A. Okay, let's see what is the answer. Yes, you are you were very right A. Because when the sensitivity is high and specificity is also quite high, the predictive positive predictive value will be high. How we can see now? Uh, now we come to the predictive values. Predictive values are two: positive predictive value or negative predictive value. Positive predictive value. is the proportion of the people who test positive uh, out of the uh, positive total positive plus false positive who truly have the disease uh, uh, for example i uh, right from the beginning main ek example aapko deta hu aur urdu mein deta hu abhi pichle dino corona chal raha tha theek hai let's say ke bahut high wave thi aur shuru ka pehli dusri wave thi pichle saal 20 ki baat hai तो जिस बंदे को फीवर होता था फीवर और जुकाम हुआ उसको गला खराब हुआ खांसी और फीवर हुआ तो एकदम सब कहते थे ये कोरोना और वो निकलता भी था कोरोना ठीक है जबकि उससे पहले कोविड से पहले किसी को फीवर या होता था कफ होती थी तो आप कहते थे कोई कोई बात नहीं ये सीजनल है ये आम फ्लू है कभी सीरियस करोना वायरस सब भी थे किसी का उस वक्त ख्याल नहीं जाता था तो अगर हम ये क्लिनिकल टेस्ट है फीवर भी एक क्लिनिकल टेस्ट है कफ भी एक क्लिनिकल टेस्ट है तो जब प्रिविलेंस उस डिजीज और हम इसको फॉर एग्जांपल हम प्रोडक्ट पॉजिटिव प्रिडिक्टिव वैल्यू निकाल रहे हैं फीवर की फॉर कोरोना तो जब कोरोना बहुत ज्यादा फैला हुआ था तो फीवर की पॉजिटिव प्रिडिक्टिव वैल्यू बहुत हाई थी ठीक है क्योंकि डिजीज प्रिवलेंट थी जब ये करोना नहीं था या करोना जब अल्लाह करे इन शाह खत्म हो जाएगा फिर फीवर भी होगा तो कोई ऐसा परेशानी वाली बात नहीं होगी तो क्योंकि उसकी प्रेवलेंस कम हो जाएगी तो पॉजिटिव प्रोडिक्टिव वैल्यू भी कम हो जाएगी एक और एग्जांपल मैं आपको देता हूँ अभी रिसेंटली जो आ, दो टेस्ट सबसे ज्यादा यूज हुए बहुत ज्यादा उनकी यूटिलिटी हुई एक पी की और एक एच की पी की अब मैं अभी हम डिस्कस भी करेंगे पी की सेंसिटिविटी कम थी फॉर पी सी आर फॉर करोना तकरीबन कोई 
सिक्सटी परसेंट भी ये आइडियल नहीं था ये पक्की बात है ये आइडियल नहीं था लेकिन अगर किसी में पॉजिटिव आ जाता था तो आ, कहते थे कोरोना ही है यानी पीसीआर की स्पेसिफिटी बहुत अच्छी थी लेकिन पीसीआर की सेंसिटिविटी कम थी लेकिन एच की लोग कहते थे एच बहुत सारे पेशेंट थे जिनको पीसीआर तो नेगेटिव था लेकिन एच पॉजिटिव था अब एच आर सी टी बिल्कुल गोल्ड uh, स्टैंडर्ड नहीं है पी सी आर के लिए कोरोना uh, के लिए बिकॉज वो ये तो नहीं कहता कि इसमें ये पर्टिकुलर वायरस मौजूद है गोल्ड स्टैंडर्ड तो इसमें वायरस कल्चर ही है लेकिन जो खास पेस्टीज uh, हैं ग्राउंड ग्लास पेस्टी अगर कोरोना uh, प्रविलेंट हो और किसी के एच आर सी टी में ग्राउंड ग्लास पेस्टीज आ जाए तो काफ़ी चांसेज हैं कि उसको कोविड uh, ही होगा तो इसलिए पॉजिटिव प्रिडिक्टिव वैल्यू प्रिविलेंस पे बहुत ज़्यादा डिपेंड करती है अब कुछ साल गुजर ही जाएंगे इन जब कोविड ख़त्म हो जाएगा तो जब एच आर सी टी किसी का कराएगा और डी जी ओज नज़र आएंगी ग्राउंड क्लास पेस्टिस तो किसी का ख्याल कोविड पे नहीं जाएगा बिकॉज उस वक्त वो डिजीज प्रिविलेंस नहीं होगी सो so, ये जो है पैरामीटर ये ख़ास तौर पर प्रिविलेंस पर डिपेंड करता है इसी तरह बिल्कुल नेगेटिव प्रिडिक्टिव वैल्यू है नेगेटिव प्रिडिक्टिव वैल्यू जो है वो ये है कि द प्रोपोर्शन ऑफ द डिजीज पीपल आउट ऑफ द नेगेटिव पॉपुलेशन यानी ट्रू नेगेटिव आउट ऑफ द ट्रू नेगेटिव प्लस फॉल्स नेगेटिव और ये भी प्रेवलेंस पे डिपेंड करता है सो प्रिडिक्टिव वैल्यूज आर डिपेंडेंट ऑन द प्रेवलेंस ऑफ द डिजीज आर पॉपुलेशन ऑफन क्वाइट डिफरेंट फ्रॉम स्टडी पॉपुलेशन दे आर इन्फ्लुएंस बाय बाय द प्रेवलेंस ऑफ डिजीज इन द पॉपुलेशन दैट इज सो इफ अब इसमें लेसन क्या है लेसन ये है कि जब आप कोई भी आर्टिकल पढ़ रहे हो और उसमें देखें कि किसी टेस्ट का प्रडिक्टिव वैल्यू कम है पॉजिटिव तो आप ये ना समझेंगे वो टेस्ट खराब है हो सकता है उसकी जो प्रिविलेंस हो डिजीज की उस पॉपुलेशन में कम हो तो ये हमेशा जेन में रखिएगा अब ये एक्चुअल एग्जाम्पल है बस मैं दो तीन मिनट में ख़त्म कर रहा हूँ जी इन शाला दो तीन मिनट ये एक प्रवलेंस है एक पॉपुलेशन में टू परसेंट और एक में नाइन्टी एट परसेंट दोनों में हमने एक हज़ार टेस्ट किए तो सेंसिटिविटी स्पेसिटिविटी उस टेस्ट की बिल्कुल एक जैसी रिपोर्टेड है बिल्कुल एक जैसी है तो कैलकुलेशन के बाद देखा कि नेगेटिव पॉजिटिव प्रोडिक्टिव वैल्यू टू परसेंट पॉपुलेशन में सिर्फ सेवनटीन थी जबकि पी दूसरी पॉपुलेशन जिसमें नाइन्टी पॉजिटिव था वो नाइन्टी थी आ, ये मैं स्लाइड आपको शेयर कर दूंगा यू कैन डू दिस कैलकुलेशन योरसेल्फ एंड देन यू कैन फाइंड आउट वी विल आल्सो वी विल आल्सो शेयर द दिस होल योर लेक्चर रिकॉर्डिंग ऑल्सो सो हियर आई आई विल स्टॉप बिकॉज़ ऑफ टाइम कंस्ट्रेंट दिस इज अगले छठा क्वेश्चन कर दें अगले छठा क्वेश्चन कर दें अच्छा ठीक है अब ये रिसीवर ऑपरेटिंग क्रेस्टिक कर्व है इसके लिए मैं छोटा सा एक नेक्टोड बताऊंगे ये बहुत कम लोग सुना तो होगा लोगों ने लेकिन बनाने में थोड़ा सा इश्यू होता है एक दो बार मुझे लाहौर से कॉल आई थी कि किसी को नहीं आ रहा बनाना तो कैसे बनाएंगे तो ये बहुत आसान है ये एस पी पे आप इसको कंस्ट्रक्ट कर सकते हैं और इसके दो बहुत टास्क है इम्पॉर्टेंट जो मैंने कहा था ना कि कट ऑफ नहीं मिलती आपको अगर किसी किसी आपको टेस्ट की कट ऑफ डिटर्मिन करनी है तो यू कैन यूज आर ओ आपको कट ऑफ भी देता है और वेलिडेशन ऑफ टेस्ट भी देता है ये डॉक्टर नुजत ने भी इस पर थोड़ा सा बताया था आपको कि ये एरिया अंडर कर्व जितना ज़्यादा होगा उतनी ज़्यादा उस टेस्ट की वैलिडिटी होगी जनरली 80 से ऊपर जो या पॉइंट एट से ऊपर जो एरिया अंडर कर्व है ये टेस्ट इज एक्सीलेंट एंड 50 परसेंट जो है ना वो 50 से ऊपर हो तो तो बिल्कुल पास होता है टेस्ट तो इन फिर हम इसको करेंगे और कभी फिर मौका मिला तो आपको मैं एक्चुअली एस के ऊपर आर ओ सी कर्व बनाना भी दिखा दूंगा और उसकी वीडियोस भी भेज दूंगा और इसके अलावा फिर बाकी प्रोडिक्टिव वैल्यूज भी हम बाद में कर लेंगे तो आज के लिए इतना ही है थैंक यू वेरी मच वंस अगेन टू ऑल ऑफ यू फॉर गिविंग दिस अपॉर्चुनिटी एंड बीइंग विद मी थैंक यू थैंक यू प्रोफेसर अमर यू है सच ए important lecture and very complete lecture there is no need of uh, any comments are uh, from my side of the panelist uh, yakeen and uh, these values are not only important ek cheez add karunga 
कि ये सिर्फ इम्पोर्टेंट क्लिनिकल लेबोरेटरी के लिए नहीं है यूर लेक्चर इज वेरी इम्पोर्टेंट इन मेकिंग द रिसर्च एंड एनी ऑफ द जब भी हम कोई प्रोजेक्ट करते हैं तो उसके अंदर ये सारी चीज़ें जो सेंसिटिविटी स्पेसिफिसिटी एक्यूरेसी नेगेटिव प्रिक्ट वैल्यू पॉजिटिव प्रिक्ट वैल्यू बहुत इंपॉर्टेंट होते हैं तो मैं इतना कहूँगा इफ़ एनी बॉडी है आस्क एंड वेल डन और आपकी जो इंटरेक्टिव लेक्चर था यूर आपके क्वेश्चन आंसर थे वो बहुत ही थे और बल्कि साथ साथ में किसी और ग्रुप में भी शेयर कर रहा था उनसे भी अपडेट साथ साथ लेता रहा था फोटोग्राफ में अच्छा एनी किसी ने सवाल पूछना हो तो मुझसे हाथ खड़ा करें और अगर नहीं है तो फिर आज के लेक्चर्स का हम इतम करते हैं एनी क्वेश्चन एनी क्वेश्चन फ्रॉम क्लिनिकल साइड कैसर सजाद और काजी साहब और मैडम एनी क्वेश्चन समझने की कोशिश कर रही हूँ मुझे ये पूछना है की क्वालिटी कंट्रोल और क्वालिटी एश्योरेंस क्या दो डिफरेंट चीजें ये अगला लेक्चर हमारा आ रहा है इसके ऊपर क्वालिटी कंट्रोल क्वालिटी सर मैं बता देता हूँ एक मिनट सर डॉक्टर साहब मैंने पूछा है तो ये हमारा फर्ज बनता है कि हम साथ ही बता दें डॉक्टर साहिमा मैं सॉरी आपको बेटा ही कहूँगा क्योंकि आप जाहिर है छोटी होंगी वो <laughs> मेरी आदत है बेटा कहने की तो बेटा ये जो है ना क्वालिटी कंट्रोल होता है सिर्फ जो प्रोडक्ट को चेक करना यानी जब हम जो नॉन सैंपल होते हैं बन जाता है जब बन जाता है टेस्ट प्रोडक्ट तैयार होता है उस वक्त जो चेक करते हैं ना जो हम सारा दिन क्वालिटी कंट्रोल लगाते हैं क्वालिटी इश्योरेंस ये होता है कि वो सारे प्रोसेस लेबॉरटरी के अंदर रीजन स्टोरेज है टेम्परेचर है लेबॉरटरी का मेंटेनेंस ऑफ द इंस्ट्रूमेंट्स वगैरह उनको सबको ठीक रखना ताकि हमारा क्वालिटी कंट्रोल फेल ना हो क्योंकि क्वालिटी कंट्रोल फेल होता है तो हमें वो टेस्ट रोकने पड़ते हैं और वो दोबारा करने पड़ते हैं तो वो कॉस्ट बहुत बढ़ जाती है तो इसलिए क्वालिटी एश्योरेंस ये कहते हैं कि टेस्ट फेल कंट्रोल फेल ही ना हो आपका तो आप पहले से हमारा प्रोडक्ट बिके सही और उसके बनाने में क्या हमारे एहतियात करनी चाहिए ताकि बने सही और अब जब हम बनाने के बाद किसी प्रोडक्ट को बेचते हैं तो उसके अंदर हमारे बेचने के अंदर भी यानी अगला यूटिलाइजेशन में हमारा क्वालिटी कंट्रोल होना दैट इज कॉल्ड द क्वालिटी एश्योरेंस एनीबॉडी एल्स जी डॉक्टर साइमा इराम एनीबॉडी एल्स नुमान साहब सजाद सजाद हैदर मोहसिन ओके इफ यू डू नॉट हैव एनी क्वेश्चन काजी साहब आपको क्लिनिकल साइड से कोई क्वेश्चन है काजी वासिक साहब मैडम सलमा कुंदी मेरे दिमाग के दरीचे उन्होंने बहुत खो लिए हैं क्योंकि हम पेपर्स पढ़ते थे टू टेल यू दूथ बहुत बातों की समझ नहीं आती थी चैट्स में भी लिखा हुआ है मुलाजिम प्रोफेसर मुलाजिम साहब एंड काजी साहब लोग पूछ रहे हैं कि हमें ये लेक्चर्स कहाँ से मिलेंगे तो आई टेक दिस अपॉर्चुनिटी ऑफ टेलिंग देम के ये यूट्यूब मुलाजिम साहब का भी है और हमारे मैं इनको भेज दूंगा मैडम इनको भेज दूंगा जी भेज दूंगा भेज दूंगा अच्छा, आप अपना भी भेज दीजिए पीएमए का भी काजी साहब प्लीज आप लिंक जी जी दोनों तरफ से भेज दें दोनों लिंक ताकि दोनों तरफ से ये डाउनलोड कर दें दोनों तरफ से डाउनलोड ये हमारे जो 6 सीरीज ऑफ लेक्चर्स है ये तो बहुत ही जबरदस्त है आज चौथा हो गया जो कि ब्रिगेडियर साहब ने बहुत अच्छी तरह हमें समझा दिया था और इसी सीरीज में प्रोफेसर नुजत मुशाहिद साहिबा थी आज भी मौजूद है नुजत साहिबा का भी मैं शुक्रिया अदा करती हूँ उन्होंने भी हमें बहुत अच्छी तरह समझाया था डॉक्टर रफीक हनानी का भी इसमें बहुत बड़ा कंट्रीब्यूशन था थैंक्स टू ऑल थ्री थैंक यू डॉक्टर मुलाजम साहब यू आर द मैन बिहाइंड द गन फॉर ऑर्गेनाइजिंग दीज वेबिनार्स हार्ट सॉफ्ट टू यू एंड हार्ट सॉफ्ट टू काजी वासिक साहब क्योंकि वो हमारा सब कुछ डील कर रहे होते हैं वेबिनार की एंड में हमारे पीएमए के ट्रेजर भी हैं और समाओ के एक्टिंग प्रेसिडेंट भी हैं आई विश यू ऑल अ वेरी हैप्पी संडे अल्लाह आप सबको ओमिक्रॉन से महफूज रखे और हर बलाओं से महफूज रखे थैंक यू सो मच जी मैडम इलाही मैडम इनशाला 
जो मैं अक्सर कहा करता हूँ मैडम जो ओमिक्रान आफ्टर द ओमिक्रान ये जैसे ही दो तीन महीने के बाद इसने डाउन हो जाना है तो कोरोना विल बिकम ए फ्लू लाइक कंडीशन दिस इज द ब्लेसिंग एंड दीज आर नॉट माई वर्ड बट दीज आर माई कैलकुलेशन एज ए साइंटिस्ट तो इनशाला ये जो हमारा कोरोना का ये लास्ट वेरियंट है एंड आफ्टर दैट द करोना विल बिकम जस्ट लाइक ए फ्लू लाइक कंडीशन बट वी मस्ट बी केयरफुल वी मस्ट बी अडोप्ट द कहते हैं ना कोविड एटीट्यूड कोविड एटीट्यूड बिहेवियर ही होता है कोविड बिहेवियर ही होता है वी मस्ट अडोप्ट द एस ओ पी थैंक यू सो मच थैंक यू सो मच एवरी वन थैंक यू सो मच ब्रगेडियर आमिर एजाज थैंक यू सो मच ऑल द पार्टिसिपेंट इन शाह एज मैडम सलमा कुंदी हैज एडवाइज अस वी विल इन शाह अपलोड दीज लेक्चर्स one lecture is present on the pap side and other lecture is will be present on the uh, pms side PMA. thank you so much thank you so uh, dr uh, uh, rafi khanani you are present can you uh, give some yes. comments just i am looking yes. you sir last comments can you give professor yes uh, it has khanani. been an excellent presentation today as well as the yes, last yes. one really 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 and i think that uh, our junior colleagues uh, must have learned a lot about it so this series really deserves the applause for you as well inshallah because you are, inshallah you are inshallah. behind the gun <laughs> so, so and i hope that uh, this thing will continue inshallah and, uh, inshallah inshallah ye ye inshallah sir hum nahi bhi honge to ye continue rahega inshallah sir inshallah aur khas taur par jo aapka ye vision hai ki ye hamari website par available hoga ji sir so that you can get benefited Uh, definitely definitely these all lecture will be available and inshallah these series will be continued these educational academic series will be continued forever inshallah thank you so much sir thank you i really deserves for it a big thank applause you so much, thank you so much allah hafiz allah hafiz allah hafiz allah hafiz allah hafiz allah hafiz